I have previously made a tutorial on how to make this tunic amongst others and then aimed especially at beginners. But then I realized there is a way to make tunics like this even comfier. And that is to insert a gusset at the lower sleeve. However, inserting gussets isn't the most straightforward sewing technique, but that's what I'll be showing you today. How to insert the gusset into tunics just like this. And just like the previous tutorial, I'll be explaining it so that even beginners who are making their first tunic can follow along. So without further ado, let's get sewing. For this tunic, we will start by following most of the steps of the normal tunic. We don't need to take anything extra into account when cutting the pieces. I opted to go for the version with the shoulder seam in the body. After that, we cut the neckline facing and sleeves as normal. But we do need one extra piece, the gusset. For this we cut a square of 13 by 13 centimeters. I borrowed this measurement from the chemise pattern I made earlier. You can keep this measurement for pretty much all the sizes. I would only make it smaller for a kid's tunic, or if you have really wide arms you might make it a tad bigger. But 13 by 13 should be okay for most sizes. This measurement includes the seam allowance, no need to add that on. Cut two of these, one for each sleeve. Then we can proceed like the other tunics. I sewed the shoulder seams together, pinned on and sewed in the facing, and then sewed on the sleeves on both sides. The only change here is that you stop sewing 2 cm from the edges. Basically, you do not sew the seam allowance of the sleeve to the body. Time to do the big scary thing and insert the gusset. For this, well, when we've sewn on the sleeve, we just turn it open so that you're looking at the right sides of the fabric. You can also fold the seam allowance towards the body. Before we start pinning on the gusset, the most important thing when you're going to sew all of this, do not sew through any of the seam allowances. As soon as your needle is in one of the seam allowances, go back, you're doing something wrong. Just before I start, because that's one of the most important things here. First of all, we're going to put the gusset on the sleeve right sides together, like so, lining up this edge. And it has to overlap over your body by the amount of seam allowance that you have. So in my case, that's two centimeters. Then I insert a pin where I have to stop sewing, which is where the body begins. This pin should not go through the body. Stop right, just right before it. And then we can pin all of this with the seam allowance. So in my case, two centimeters from the edge. And on this side, we have the same thing we're not going to sew through the seam allowance. So again, two centimeters from the edge of the gusset, I put in a pin and we either start or stop sewing there. So we're just going to sew this bit in between the pins. And we can sew this on the machine as regular. Now that we've sewn on the first seam of the gusset, we turn the entire thing around so that we're looking at the wrong side of the body and the wrong side of the sleeve. We can now take out the gusset and the idea is that we're basically going to attach this to the body, just like that. If you're pulling out the gusset, the seam might be under the body. You take out the entire seam and just attach it to the body. If you've done this properly and left two centimeters, then the seam allowance of the body and sleeve should just line up the edges of the fabric on the body and the gusset. So what we're going to do now is pin this at two centimeters from the edge. Personally, it appears that I have made a mistake because this is two and a half centimeters and indeed the gusset sticks out a bit compared to the seam allowance, but oh well, um, I'll just make sure that it's two here and then my gusset is slightly uneven, but that shouldn't matter much. The most important thing is that this seam between the body and the sleeve continues on straight. So that's also why I prefer to pin it on this side instead of on the gusset side, because that way I can just continue stitching this seam basically. Again, on this seam, we're also going to stop stitching two centimeters from this edge of the gusset and well, this is already two centimeters of the edge of the gusset, so no pin is needed here. And again, we can just stitch this line from here to there. Next up, we get to the trickiest bits, which is to attach these two corners to these two edges. So for this, we fold the entire tuning double at the shoulder seams. 
and then we line up the point where the gusset sleeve and bodice meet with where the stitching ends on this side. So that basically the seam allowance of the top two fabrics are also overlapping here. Then what happens next is that we fold the gusset into a triangle, lining up the edges with the sleeve. You might notice here as well that here we have that bit of seam allowance left over between the gusset and the bottom sleeve. We can just pull that out and with that line up the entire gusset. And then we can basically start pinning. Again, I like to pin from the other side so we can see where the stitch line of the sleeve and the bodice ends. And for where the stitch line between the gusset and the sleeves end, you all just have to feel between the fabric and look on the other side, see that it is here. And then I can put a pin in right there, like so. And here as well, we measure where the gusset ends and put a pin two centimeters away from that and we stop stitching at that line. Which, if you've measured everything properly, should also pretty much line up with this stitch line on the other side. So that means that, again, we can stitch this bit. We just finished stitching this line, which means that there is only one left. And well, it's pretty much already attached for you. All we have to do is pin in between these two stitch lines and sew that. Again, making sure that this is an approximate distance of two centimeters. But this line being straight is more important than the exact distance to the edge. So let's just do that. And there you go, you have sewed in the gusset. Once you lay the tunic flat, you see it turns into an extra triangle at the underarm, giving you extra movement space. The gussets also mean there are small changes on the sleeve and the side seam. Here we can start by sewing the sleeve from the gusset to the end at the wrist, keeping the regular 2cm seam allowance. And we can do the same for the side seam. For this tunic, I'm going with the side split option. So in this case, I sew from the gusset to where I want the split to start. If you don't go for the split option, you sew from the gusset all the way down to the bottom. Now that we've done all of the sewing, at least surrounding the gusset, we can finish all of the seams. There are two ways in which we can do that. First of all, we can finish each seam individually, like I will need to do on the side seam because I'm going to make a split there. Or if you're lazy or in a time crunch like I am at the moment, you can actually finish them double-sided. And how you do that is what I'll show you next. We start by cutting all the corners of the gusset. Be careful not to cut into any other layer of fabric other than the gusset. Then we can cut the seam allowance short to about one centimeter. Once you end up at the gusset, you can take away the scissors, refold the seam allowances so you're just holding the gusset and one sleeve seam, and then cut these off together. Then flip the tunic and cut the other sleeve with the other gusset seam. This can be repeated for the side seams and the side with gusset seams. When zigzagging the seams, the idea is as follows. For the sleeve, we just zigzag this together as normal. But once we end up at the part where the gusset starts, we let go, finish the seam, take everything off, and then put everything so we're just sewing these two seams together. So basically there will be a tiny gap here where parts are not zigzag, but just a tiny gap, that doesn't really matter. Once this is entirely zigzag, we can flip it around and zigzag this part of the gusset, so the back part of the arm sleeve. After that, we can start here, so on the side seam and the gusset, and sew all the way over the shoulder and back again and stop here at the bottom of the gusset. This way, these two seams will be zigzag together and we can open them up to finish these seams individually for the side seam, considering that we want to do the split. If you do not have a split, you can zigzag this entire seam together as well in the same way that we used here. So you can zigzag these together, let go of everything, put everything under the machine with these two seams together and then zigzag the side seam. So uh, let's get zigzagging.
And that's pretty much it for this tutorial on the gusset part of the tunic. After this, you can just follow the rest of the original tutorial as you would like. In my case, I'm going to continue on the splits. The splits are finished just like the other tutorial, by double folding the edges, which is the same way that the bottom hem is finished. And the sleeves are finished by zigzagging the edge and folding them over once. And that's it! One extra comfy tunic! The nice thing about the added gussets is that they allow for more range of movement, so you can lift your arms without the tunic riding up. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask them in the comments. If you'd like to see more tutorials and LARP stuff, you might want to subscribe. And if you really enjoyed it, you can leave an appreciation on Ko-Fi. And with that, thank you all for watching, and see you guys next time.